brings peace in our time. Good evening. I mean that most sincerely. Here we are then, on the day of the most gratuitous act of self-sabotage since Hitler said, hmm, you know what sounds like a good idea? A second front in Russia. And yeah, yeah, I know, salt, or what the fuck ever, but the fact of the matter is that the people who are probably going to get fucked over the worst by Brexit are the very people that voted for it. Brexit represents an abject failure on every level of our democracy, a democracy relies on an informed populace. We had a misinformed populace. It was never 350 million, and if you think that's going to end up going to the NHS, I have a bridge to sell you. Europe cost us about £260 per year per household, and conferred an economic benefit of about £3,000 per year per household. You do the math and figure that one out for yourselves. It's going to make no difference to non-EU migration, and when it comes to EU workers, ministers and various other powers that be are already scrambling to assure people from Europe that they can still come here and work. So if you thought it was suddenly going to mean a bonanza of jobs for British people, or whatever the fuck it was you thought was going to happen, shit out of luck there as well. Sorry. And who do you think inflation's going to hit hardest? Who is already having to use food banks? Who always gets hit hardest when the basics rise in price? Not the wealthy, they're insulated from it. Nope, the very kind of people that voted for Brexit are the ones that are going to get shafted by the pound getting shafted and all the other economic impacts that this is going to have. I'm sure a couple of high profile factories decided to stay or decided to move over here, but how much did they have to be bribed in order to do so? Do you think that's going to help us at all? Do you th or do you think we're ending up paying out of pocket just for a few measly jobs to stay here? And outside of the damage that Brexit itself is causing, there's the fact that it seems to have given the Tories carte blanche to completely dismantle what was left of our society after Thatcher ravaged it like a savage little terrier. Selling off the NHS, cutting everything to the bone. There was just a story the other day about something so fundamental and, and simple. Our roads are absolutely fucked everywhere with potholes and it's going to cost 12 billion and 10 years to get them back to any sort of state that they might be you know good good to use do you think they're even going to bother to spend that money and say that they'll spend that money and make that commitment to do it no and why are they fucked austerity which the tories are still pushing a lot of the deprived areas where brexit sentiment took hold were the main recipients of European aid and investment, social investment, the things that made life bearable there. Do you think that's going to be replaced with investment under the Tories? That's against their very ethos. That's not going to happen. So you played yourself. It's a dumb move in a whole bunch of other ways, like geopolitically as well, with the state of America at the moment and becoming more isolationist, with Russia being more expansionist and consolidating control over its territory, uh, with the Pacific area becoming more and more integrated over time, with China becoming more and more powerful, with India becoming more and more powerful, it made more and more sense for Europe to be a more integrated economic, social and political bloc, to counterbalance the rest and to compensate a bit for NATO losing power and influence and so on. That's fucked as well. I don't expect geopolitical issues like that to, to appeal to a lot of people down on the ground and I appreciate that they have problems and I appreciate that being treated like an idiot was a, was a bad move. I mean, politically, I think a lot of the blame for the rise in populism and nationalism can be placed on the hoity-toity middle-class left and their first world problems. You know, I agree people have a lot of issues down on the ground that need to be dealt with but they're not going to be dealt with by Brexit. Opportunists lied to you, and it's going to make all these things worse, not better. And that's who I'm sad for, the people who thought this would help them, the people who thought this was a good move, and they're going to end up getting even more reamed by it. That That's who I am salty over. That's what I'm salty over. The, the people that 
deserve and demanded some kind of change and assistance and help and ended up just throwing a tantrum and punching themselves in the face. That's who I'm sad for. The population of Britain was reduced from 58,746,379 to the 20 survivors who regrouped themselves to rebuild society. Quickly, the familiar patterns of civilization were re-established. And if you're anti-globalist and anti-corporatist, then congratulations again, you played yourself. Europe has been fairly good about things like net neutrality and criticisms of the TPP and similar treaties to, to that. It's been fairly good about protecting workers' rights um, and stemming corporatism. Now we're much more vulnerable than we were before because we tend to be more right-wing. Our banks and our companies tend to hold a lot more sway over our governments than they do in Europe. We're much more vulnerable now, and Theresa May and the Tories are salivating over the idea of removing workers' rights, more zero-hour contracts, all the rest of the things that are just going to fuck you over. I'm, I'm sorry, I feel so bad for you. You asked to be punched in the testicles. But you didn't mean to ask to be punched in the testicles. You asked for a hand job, but you're getting a punch. Now, at the start of this, I said this was a failure of our democracy, and I stand by that, not only because of the misinformed electorate, deliberately, willfully misinformed electorate. Our democracy is not perfect, by any means. It is wildly undemocratic in a whole host of ways. We've passed over opportunities for reform, and they probably won't come again in my lifetime. We have the Lords. We're still a monarchy for all that that's just really a figurehead. Our parliament is not representative of our beliefs or our, or our desires. Our seats are gerrymandered to, to hell and back. The first past the post system is terrible for representing people's views. We don't directly elect any member of our executive, the prime minister or anything else. We're basically held hostage to a pretty small and uncompromised minority of people. And it sucks. The irony of all this being that Europe is actually way more democratic than our home political system, and yet that was a complaint of a lot of people. Charity and revolution begins at home, but it doesn't. There's the problem. But there are certain things that are supposed to happen in our democracy that don't, but yeah, you know, they're supposed to exist. They're supposed to be checks and balances. Things like this, this, this referendum. Most referenda in the UK are not supposed to be binding. They're supposed to be advisory. This one was no different. For it to be a binding referendum, there has to be very specific wording in the referendum act to, to, to pass the specific referendum that you're having. It has to say that this will be a legally binding referendum. That wasn't the case here. This was only ever meant to be an advisory refer referendum. And as it stands, a slight, bare majority of people voted for it. And that amounts to barely one third of the British population dragging the rest of us down with them. In most other countries, this kind of constitutional change requires a two thirds majority. And the initial vote to go into Europe did have that. This, however, didn't. But they've taken it as absolute carte blanche to, to go ahead, and not only to go ahead with a Brexit, but on that slim margin, since reversed according to polls, including the margin of error, on that slim margin they decided to go ahead with the hardest possible, nastiest, most bitter Brexit. I doubt a lot of people who were voting for Brexit wanted to go to that extent. Many of them probably had ideas of some kind of halfway house like other nations have got with Europe. But no, we're going with the full shebang. Parliament is supposed to be sovereign in the UK. That means it's not the executive that truly holds the power, it's not the Crown that truly holds the power, it's not the Lords that truly hold the power, it's Parliament, which is meant to be directly accountable to the people through elections. First past the post system notwithstanding. And so Parliament is supposed to represent not only their local areas, but also to lead. The parties thing screws all this up, but they're supposed to lead. They're supposed to make decisions for the good of people, not necessarily what the people want, but what they know is good for people. 
This is why we have experts. This is why you go to a doctor who knows more than you do about medicine. And in theory, politicians are supposed to know more than the average spod about economics, geopolitics, all these, all these kinds of things. And so they're supposed to lead. And in the past they have, they've made decisions against the popular will of the people, such as repealing the death penalty. In this case, obviously, they should have overturned Brexit and said, no, we're not going to do it. It's going to be too harmful. But apparently they're too afraid. Politicians have forgotten how to lead, I suppose, how, how to convince, how to do the right thing at any degree of personal cost. That's the, supposed to be part of the balance in our system. People are more familiar with the American system. We have the different branches that all balance with each other. In our system, that's how that's supposed to work. And the courts as well, to a lesser extent. And we've seen some of that around Brexit. But that's not, what, not what's happened here. They've uh, allowed the country to be fucked because they're afraid of being unelected, overturned, someone else winning in their seat. And yet those who've come out most strongly against Brexit have reaped the benefit of, of votes going into the future. And that's that's the other irony, is that a lot of the people that voted for Brexit do not normally vote. These are not people who normally vote in elections, whereas the people who normally vote, who regularly vote in elections, tended to be far more pro-Remain. So in the end, they've probably ended up fucking themselves over democratically anyway. Not that that's a good reason to change anything here. With characteristic courage and determination, the entire population dedicated itself to perpetuating the British way of life. God save our gracious queen. Long live our noble queen. God no, no, save our no, queen. No, no, Send her no, 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 we don't sing that any longer. You don't? No, we, we sing now that God should save Mrs. Ethel Shroke of 393A High Street, Leytonstone. Oh. Of the 20 people who are known to be left alive in England, she stands next in line to the... Th so now we're headed into a deeply uncertain future, a much smaller future, a much poorer future of social, political and economic impoverishment for much of Britain. And my thoughts go out to the people whose relationships are going to be destroyed, who won't be able to live in the same country as each other. Uh, my thoughts go out to all the poor people who are going to end up being screwed, whether they voted for Brexit or not, by the rise in prices, the inflation, the potential import duties and everything else going forward, to the people who voted on a xenophobic basis for whatever reason, whether they were lied to about immigrants taking their jobs or, or whatever else, because that's not going to change. You're not going to get what you wanted. My thoughts go out to the NHS, which is going to be even more stretched as they find it even harder to fulfil positions. Is it something like 5 to 10% of nurses and doctors are from EU countries? If they all go, then what? Increased restrictions on non-EU migration has already had an impact on the NHS. This is going to make it worse. To people in impoverished areas who are no longer going to get EU investment and are not going to see that replaced with any Tory investment. I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for everyone. Hope is not absolutely lost, of course. There's a long negotiation process ahead. And as some of these things begin to bite, maybe more and more people, enough people will change their minds. Maybe Labour will get their act together and decide to come out against it. Maybe the Liberal Democrats will be resurgent because they've taken such a strong anti-Brexit position. Who knows? But don't ask me to go along with this any more than you'd ask me to go along with any other monstrous act of stupidity. I'm not going to help you. I'm going to continue to, to fight this and speak out against it as much as I can. If we can't overturn it, maybe we can at least soften it. Maybe we can find a way for some of us to retain our European citizenship going forward into the future. If you don't want it, fine. I'd happily pay for it, for all the rights and benefits that it, it, that it confers. But don't ask me to go along with it and don't ask me to shut up. What's going on is wrong. It's painful. It's damaging. It harms all of us. And there's no way I'm going along with anything like that without speaking up. Zang. God save Mrs. Air.